In the last section, we learned about logarithms. We've learned their basic definition, how to convert them into an exponential form, which let us figure out how to evaluate some simple logarithms. And we learned how to graph them and how to adjust the graph using our transformations. In this section, we're going to learn some more details about logarithms. More importantly, how we can combine them, how we can separate them, so on and so forth. So this is over all of the properties to help us evaluate all different aspects of logarithmic functions. So let's review the properties that we do know at this point. We know that if we have log of 1 with any base or even natural log, we know that our answer is automatically going to be zero, because if we think in the opposite format, something to the zero power is going to give us one. Anytime our base of the log and the base of our exponent match, they in essence cancel each other out, and they give us our exponent. So that means if our exponent is one, then our answer is going to be one. And then same if I flip the order of it. So if my bases match, they in essence cancel each other out, and you end up with whatever you're taking the log of. So these are the basic functions here. These are basically if I'm just looking at a single log. Now we're going to learn some more properties of how we can combine and separate logs. And so my first property here is log base b of x times y is log base b of x plus log base b of y. Now, I'm going to prove this to you, why it works, and then we will actually start utilizing it. Okay, so let me start with this proof here. I'm going to make us a couple of substitutions. I'm going to let m equals log base b of x, and I'm going to let n equal log base b of y. Now, if I rewrite those in exponential format, so this rewriting is b to the m power is equal to x, and rewriting this into exponential format is b to the nth power is equal to y. Then, since I know I'm going to want to take x times y, let me do that here. I'm going to take x times y. So that tells me that x times y is b to the m times b to the n. But we know when we learned exponential properties way back when, we can actually simplify this here since my bases match. That's b to the m plus n. Now, let me look at all of this. So I'm going to take log base b of x times y. And if I make this substitution, that is equivalent to log base b of b to the m plus n. Well, we just reviewed our basic properties that said any time my two bases match, I'm left with my exponent. So in this case, my two bases match, so I am left with my exponent. And so that means that I am left with m plus n. Well, let me make one more substitution, and then I think we're there. If I take m plus n, that means I'm going to take log base b of x plus log base b of y. So that is equivalent to log base b of x plus log base b of y. And now we just have proved our property. So on the left, we have log base b of x, y. And then on the right, we have log base b of x plus log base b of y. And so basically what our proof boils down to is a lot of substituting things back and forth, but it also boils down to our exponential property. And that makes sense because logarithms are inverses of exponents. So now that we know this property is true, let's actually work it in an example down here. So basically we're going to reprove this property with actual numbers rather than just variables. So let me work this one here, and I'm going to work at the inside first. So log base 3 of 3 times 9, I can think of log base 3 of 27. And then I can convert 27 into the base of 3, so I can simplify it very easily. So 27 is 3 to the third power. Well, 
here, I'm using that same property that we've seen multiple times. My bases match, so they cancel out. So that gives us a simplification of 3. Now, if I work it this way using the product rule, this is log base 3 of 3 plus log base 3 of 9. Or, let me just rewrite this one here, log base 3 of 3 plus log base 3 of 9. I'm going to rewrite it as 3 squared. Same property that we've seen multiple times. Anytime my bases match, that means they cancel out, and that means I'm left with my exponent. And so in this case, I'm left with 1 plus 2. Of course, 1 plus 2 is equivalent to 3. So I've worked this property two different ways, and since I've worked it two different directions, my answers come up to be exactly the same. So that means I have confirmed that this product rule works. Okay, now that we've confirmed that it works twice, once with the official proof and one with an actual example, let's utilize it to help simplify some of our logarithmic functions. So we have two different ways that we can utilize this rule here, is if it starts out as a single log, then I can separate it into multiple logs. Or if it starts out as multiple logs, then I can put it together as a single log. So we get to work these back and forth. Um, I believe that these are basic enough that you can utilize property one on your own, the product rule property. So I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can come up with the answers to these on your own. Okay, so in the first one, I have a multiplication. And so my property rule says log base b of xy is log base b of x plus log base b of y. So that gives me log base 2 of 8 plus log base 2 of x. So my first step is just utilizing that product rule property that we just learned. Now, if we can, they expect us to simplify, just like always. So I know that I'm not going to be able to do anything with this over here, but I can actually simplify this one. If I write 8 as a base of 2, then I can make those cancel out. So I have log base 2 of 2 to the third. Well, I know that that basically gives me 3. So the simplified version of this is 3 plus log base 2 of x. Okay, let's do the second one here. This gives me natural log of 5 plus natural log of x plus natural log of y. And so basically this is saying that we can use this product rule in more than just one addition. If it's all multiplication, then basically you're going to be left with all addition here. I cannot simplify any of those here. I can write a decimal approximation for natural log of 5 by plugging it in my calculator. But that's going to give me a crazy ugly decimal, which I do not want. I always want the exact format. And so that's what this is. And so this here is just my final answer. And then this one down here, we're going to go the opposite way. So I have an addition. My bases match. So that means I can put it together as a single log. And so this is log base 2 of p cubed times q. And that's all we can do with it at this time. Um, I guess we could maybe simplify it just a little bit by taking care of the dot and just saying p cubed q, and that's perfectly fine. But that's all it wants us to do here. So we're basically just getting practice of writing these back and forth. All right, so we have learned the basic properties in the last section, and then we just learned the product rule property. In the next video, we're going to keep adding properties to this. We're going to learn the quotient property, which is very similar to this one right here.